current grade nines, uh, we are soldiering forth with our factorizing and we're on to our third type of factorizing. So just remember so far we've done a highest common factor which can involve a highest common bracket and the switcheroo. Then we did the dots which I think is the easiest of the factorizings and now we're starting my favorite which is a trinomial. Now we should know what a trinomial is. A trinomial is any algebraic expression with three terms because the prefix tri means three. Now any algebraic expression with three terms is called a trinomial except not every trinomial can be factorized how we're going to factorize. So trinomials that can factorize have a certain pattern and once we start doing this you'll see the pattern quite often and it'll become something that you're quite used to. Okay, so what's the pattern? The pattern we're going to notice is we're going to have something squared plus some of that whatever it was and then plus a number. Now that doesn't seem very clear so let me just give you an example. An example would be what happens if you had x squared plus 2x minus 3. So that's the type of pattern. So you have something squared, it could be a squared or b squared, but something squared, then a term with just a single x with a coefficient and then a number. Now again, you'll see that a lot, so don't worry if you're a little bit confused about what I mean about that pattern. Okay, now our first example does not say factorize at all. It says simplify. Now why have I chosen to do this? I've chosen to first start with the simplifying one because factorizing is the opposite of simplifying. So if we know how to simplify, we, it's far easier to factorize. Now this is going to be a particularly long lesson and a particularly interesting one. So just make sure that you take down as many notes as you can. Push pause, rewatch sections if it's something you're unsure of. I'm trying to, I will try and go quite slowly in trinomials because it can be quite tough to, to get into initially and then it becomes quite fun. So let's remind ourselves about how to simplify. First of all, if we have a binomial times a binomial, we distribute in our x. So x times x is x squared and x times 4 is 4x. Then we would distribute in our 3, so we get plus 3x and then 3 times 4 gives us positive 12. Now just a couple of things to notice here. Um, the x squared came from multiplying x times x and the positive 12 came from multiplying positive 3 times positive 4. Now these middle terms are actually like terms so what happens is we actually add them together. So I get 7x in the middle which actually comes from the sum of two like terms. x squared is a product of x and x and the 12 is a product of 3 and 4. Right, let's try the next one. Again, x times x, so I'm going to get x squared. Then I distribute my x and I get minus 2x. Now I'm going to distribute in my minus 1, so I get minus 1x. And then minus 1 times minus 2 actually gives me plus 2. So again, notice here that x squared is a product of x and x, and positive 2 is a product of negative 1 and negative 2. And then my middle terms are like terms, and so I land up with x squared minus 3x plus 2. So my middle term isn't actually a direct result of a product, it's a result of adding two like terms that were themselves products. Okay, now our last one, x times x, which lands me up with x squared, x times minus 1 is minus 1x, I could also say just minus x then plus 3x and minus 3. So again x squared is a product of x times x and negative 3 it's negative now because my signs were different signs and a positive times a negative gave me negative 3. Then my like terms in the middle 3x take away 1x is 2x. So I just wanted to first do some examples just to quickly remind us how to do a binomial times a binomial because ultimately what factorizing is is taking this answer and going back to the question, going back to a product of the factors. So what we're going to do in example two now is we're going to try and see if we can match some columns. So we're going to look at the left hand side here which is typically the answers if we were simplifying and we're going to look at the right hand side here which would be the questions if we were simplifying. 
and the question is here can we match the columns okay well let's have a first look at what do all of these have in common every single one of these questions would start with x times x every single one and so you'll notice all the columns on the left hand side have x squared as the start and that's because every time you're multiplying this binomial times a binomial you're starting with x times x which is x squared so let me just fill these all in okay now what else do all of these have in common if I look at obviously I would now distribute in my x and my 2 but where if I scroll up here this first term came from a product and this last term came from a product so let me just focus on the first and the last terms here I would have positive 2 times negative 3 which will give me either positive or negative 6 if I just think about the numbers here I'll have 1 times 6 which will give me 6 1 times 6 6 2 times 3 6 2 times 3 6 1 times 6 6 2 times 3 6 1 times 6 6 so every single one of these when I multiply them out I'm going to get an x squared as my first product and my 6 is my last product so hopefully we're learning a little bits of noticing things about products as we go so that now when we start factorizing next we can get really good at it now let's have a look at the signs of the 6 what would the sign this would be positive times negative so this would be a negative 6 this would be negative 1 times positive 6 which would be negative 6 this would be positive 1 times positive 6 which would be positive now I'm hoping you're starting to notice that if the signs are the same so positive times positive positive if the signs are different negative times positive negative negative times negative those signs are the same so I land up with a positive a negative times a negative will give me a positive and a positive times a negative will give me a negative so what should I have noticed so far well first of all as in dark blue the product of x and x always starts me with an x squared then in the light blue my two numbers are always here multiplying together to give me six how do I know the sign of the six I go and have a look do I have the same signs inside the brackets or do I have different signs so what's the only thing that's missing now the only thing that's missing is the middle terms now I'm going to erase everything I've done so far so that I can show you where my middle terms are going to come from now my middle terms are going to come from going minus 3x plus 2x those are the only parts I haven't thought about so far so minus 3x plus 2x minus x plus 6x take away x plus 5x plus 6x plus 1x plus 7x 3x and 2x makes 5x so every single one of these middle terms is coming from the sum so it's that product and that product added together so 3x take away 2x is 1x minus 6x minus 1x minus 7x minus 3x minus 2x minus 5x minus 6x plus 1x minus 5x so notice that all of those middle things are 5 or 7 or 1 simply because when you add these two middle terms together we're working with 6 and 1 and 2 and 3 so those are the various things that they add to now we've quickly multiplied out those products hopefully noticing a couple of things along the way so that now when we try and move backwards we can make our lives easier now let's just quickly match our columns here x squared plus 7x plus 6 that is c so let me tick off c x squared minus 7x plus 6 is f that's f x squared minus 5x minus 6 is h x squared plus 5x minus 6 is b x squared plus 5x plus 6 is d x squared minus 5x plus 6 is g and so I'm down to 2 x squared minus x minus 6 is a and then this is e so hopefully we've learned a couple of things to look out for 
So now we start what this whole video is about and this is where there's going to be lots of notes and you're going to have to pause quite a few times to write down all our steps. Okay, example 3 says factorize. So you'll notice they've given me what looks like an answer. That's normally the answer when you multiply a binomial times a binomial. So what's the first thing we look for when we're factorizing? We're going to look for a highest common factor. Now in the entire of example 3, because I'm trying to focus on just getting used to trinomials, I haven't included a highest common factor at all. In, tom in the next lesson which we watch, it's not going to be tomorrow because you're going to be working on examples of this tomorrow, but the lesson after that, we're going to be looking at examples of where there is a highest common factor first. So every single one of these examples I'm going to say to you, always check for highest common factor, just so we don't get into a bad habit. But in reality, every single one of these is not going to have a highest common factor. Now after highest common factor, you have to say to yourself, do I have a dot or do I have a trinomial? Now it's very easy to tell the dif difference because a dot has two terms, whereas a trinomial has three terms. So immediately I can tell this is not a dot. Now just be careful, just because this has three terms doesn't mean it's necessarily going to factorize as a trinomial because the question is, does it fit the pattern? Now the pattern is something squared plus a term with that just something and then a number. Now it doesn't matter if it's not in that order because you can always make it in that order but the answer is yes here it does fit this pattern that I wanted so I can tick that off and I think this is a trinomial. So now we start our five steps. Now our first step in a trinomial is that every single trinomial comes from a binomial times a binomial. You would have noticed that in the previous question. It's always a bracket with two terms times a bracket with two terms and then the middle terms add so you have three terms. So that's my first step that I always do. My second step that I look for is I look for what's obvious. Which one of these terms is very obvious where it comes from? It's very obvious where x squared is going to come from because x squared can only possibly come from x times x. So immediately I go fill in what's obvious to me. Now what's my third step? My third step is to look at the sets of factors that could multiply together to give me 12. We don't look at the middle step, I mean the middle term, simply because the middle term doesn't come directly from a product. The middle term, as you remember from the previous examples, comes from adding like terms. And so I first have to figure out what my possibilities are before I look at what can add together. So we skip the middle term and we ask ourselves what set of factors could multiply together to give me 12? Sets of factors. Now they don't add together, they multiply together. Because remember how do we get that last term is we take those two numbers and we multiply them together. So what set of factors could multiply to get 12? Now, there's three options for me here. I could have 12 times 1. I could have 6 times 2. And I could have 3 times 4. So I list all of my options. Now, where do I go to next? The next thing I go to is I go to my sign of my constant. So I look at my sign of my constant term. Now, that sign is positive. 12. Now if it's positive, the only way you're going to multiply together to give you a positive is if you have the same signs. So, and they should, we hopefully were trying to tease that out in the previous examples. So either I need a positive and a positive, so positive 12 times positive 1, or positive 6 times positive 2, or I need a negative and a negative, so minus 3 times minus 4. So the question is, which one of these is right? Now you can tell which one of these is right by looking at the middle term. Simply because whatever numbers these are, whatever their signs are, you're going to get middle terms and those middle terms have to add together to give me positive 8. So if these two have to add together to give me positive 8, they're both going to have to be positive. Simply because if both of the middle terms were negative, if you have a negative, negative term and a negative term, 
they will add together to give you a negative term. So because I need positive 8 in the middle, I know my signs are plus and a plus. So you should always be able to fill in your signs before you even think about what sets of numbers you want to use. Now we enter our last step. And our last step is, okay, which set of these factors is going to work? Now, all of these sets of factors will work for the 12. So what's the only missing link? The missing link is which set of factors will get me the middle term. So which set of factors, now how do they get to the middle term? They add. So we'll add to get 8x in the middle. So now I'm looking at my 8. So what I mean by that is let's pretend I was going to put in 12 and 1. Let's check if it was 12 and 1. Let's check what would happen. If we had 12 and 1, well, first of all, if we multiplied out, we'd say x times x, which is x squared, which is what we obviously knew what was going to happen. And our last term would be 12 times 1, which is going to work. So where would our middle term come from? Our middle term would come from going x times 1, which is 1x, and then 12 times x, which is 12x. And then we would add them together. And so the question is, can 12x and 1x get me 8x? And the answer is no. I mean, I've gone and checked that out, but I didn't even have to put it in. I could have just thought about it. 12 and 1 could never add together to give me 8. You've just got to concentrate on the fact that you're saying they can't add together. So far, we've always been multiplying. But don't forget that the middle term comes from adding like terms. So 12 and 1 aren't going to work. Can 6 and 2 get me to 8 in the middle? And I think so, because 6 plus 2 is 8. So I'm going to put in my 6, and I'm going to put in my 2. And now what I would do in my head is I'd multiply out. Now I've checked the x squared, and I know 6 times 2 is 12. So it's only the middle term I have to worry about. And that is going to be 6x, and that's going to be 2x. And so they will add together to give me 8x, and so I know it works. So if I go back to my question, I've tried to color coordinate this, but basically my first term is to so my first step is to consider the x squared, what's obvious. My second step was to consider so my first step was binomial times binomial, so let me actually go back and do that. This is my second step. My second step is that x times x will give me x squared. My third step is what will multiply to give to give me 12. My fourth step is to figure out the signs. And the signs come from kind of a combo of both of those things. And then my last step, step number five, comes from, okay, how do I get eight? So we're going to write down these sets of steps in the first couple of examples, just until we get really good at trinomials. Now, you'll see, you'll see and look, you'll have a look at this, and you'll go, oh my word, that took us forever. It only takes us forever for the first couple of examples when we get used to this. And eventually, you become really fast at factorizing trinomials. So let's have a look at the next one. Now I'm going to raise the bottom of this um, working here just so I can write new notes for this example. So what do you notice? I have specifically decided to keep with the theme of 12 being the number at the end just so we can look at all the different ways we can do this. Okay, now as I've said before, the first thing we always check for is the highest common factor. Now I've deliberately left those out so we say to ourselves, is this a trinomial or a dots? And what do you know? It's a trinomial. So my first step when I'm factorizing a trinomial is to say that every trinomial comes from a binomial times a binomial. My second step is I look at what's obvious. Now the only thing that's obvious here is that there's only one way to get x squared, and that is x times x. My second step, or sorry, my third step, is to look at what are the possibilities for factors of 12. Now we've actually already written these out before and you'll notice in the first like five or six examples I've deliberately used 12. So 12 and 1, 6 and 2, or 3 and 4. Those are my sets of options. Now in a test and exam, especially when I'm first getting used to this, I write those in little blocks on the side of my page as working and that's absolutely encouraged. What's my fourth step? My fourth step is to look at my signs. How could you possibly multiply together, in this case, to get positive 12? So I know that my signs must be the same. 
So that E must be plus times a plus or minus times a minus to get me positive 12. Now I should be able to fill in my signs before I even go anywhere because the middle term is negative. So I know that I'm going to need both my middle terms to be negative so then when I add them together I get minus 8x. So that minus in the middle term is what tells me I know that both of my terms are going to be minus. Right, my last step is which set of factors add together to give me my middle term. So which set of factors add to get. And I don't even have to worry about the negative because I've dealt with the signs. It's actually just the 8 I'm worried about. So where is that 8 going to come from? Now if we look at our set of factors, we've already discussed the fact that 12 and 1, 12 and 1 can give me 13. It's never going to get me 8. And once again, I think 6 and 2 is going to work. Except this time I think it's minus 6 and minus 2. And I would multiply out in my head or on my question paper in an exam. So that's x squared minus 6x minus 2x, which gives me that minus 8x in the middle. And a minus times a minus is a plus, so plus 12x at the end. So I always just multiply out in my head just to check. Now notice these two examples are very, very similar. And they factorize to very similar things because they've got exactly the same numbers. It's just that the middle term is a negative. And so both of the factors in B land up being negative. Right, let's try some more. Um, x squared minus 7x plus 12. Okay, now I'm going to stop writing highest common factor every time because I've said to you that I'm deliberately avoiding it, but my first step would be a highest common factor. Once I've figured out that there isn't a highest common factor, I know that every trinomial comes from a binomial times a binomial. My second step is to look for what is obvious. The first term is obvious. Obviously, x has to come from x times x. Remember, we skip the middle term and we look at my constant. And I say, what are my options for multiplying to get 12? So what are my options for my factors of 12? Now, we've written these down before, so we start to get used to them. It's 12 and 1. It's 6 and 2. It's 3 and 4. My fourth step is to look at my signs. Now, don't forget that we completely ignore the middle term, and we look at the positive 12. So because they're positive, I need the same signs. So I either need plus plus, or I need minus minus. Now I need to figure out before I continue which ones. Now which ones are they? Well the middle term's negative. So I need two negatives because they're going to add like terms together to get negative 7x. And there's no way that two positive terms will add together to give me a negative term. So I know that they're both minus. And so my last step is which set of factors is going to work. So which set of factors will add Remember, the middle term always comes from adding. Which set will add to give me minus 7x? Now, I don't even have to worry about the minus because I've discussed my signs. I'm worried about the 7. Now, 12 and 1 are never going to give me 7. 6 and 2 could get me 8. Or if I was saying 6 minus 2, I could get to 4. But I think it's 3 and 4 because 3 plus 4 is 7. Now it doesn't matter which order I put them in, I haven't said that before, but it, the order of the brackets is completely arbitrary because multiplication is commutative. So you can put the 4 in the first bracket and the 3 in the next bracket, it really doesn't matter. Again, I would multiply out, if this was my exam, just to check. Okay, I'm hoping that this is making more and more sense. So let's move down to the next one, I'm just going to make space for my notes. Right, again I've gone with the 12 just to explore all the different varieties. So if I hit this question in the exam, the first thing I'd look for is a highest common factor. Once I've figured out that there's no highest common factor, I know that every single trinomial, which this is, comes from a binomial times a binomial. My second step is what is obvious here is that x squared can only have come from x multiplied by x. My third step is what are my sets of factors that could multiply together to give me 12. So what are my sets of factors of 12? 
Now we're starting to get really good at this because we've done it so many times. 12 is 12 and 1, or it's 6 and 2, or it's 3 and 4. So on to my next one is I like to look at my signs. Now don't forget, I've said this before, we don't look at the middle term for the signs, we look at the constant term for the signs. So that constant term is negative which tells me that I need to be multiplying different signs together to get a negative. So one of these brackets is going to be a plus and one's a negative. So there aren't different options here. That's it. There's one plus and there's one minus. I'm not too sure which factor is going to get the plus and which one's get the minus, but I'll figure that out as we go. So our next step is which set of factors will add to give me my middle term. So which set of factors will add to give me minus 1x, which is my middle term, which is there. Okay, well, 12 and 1, now since they have to be different signs, I could say 12 take away 1, which would be 11, um, which is not going to work. 6 take away 2 is 4, that's not going to work. Now, 3 and 4, if I subtract those, I'm definitely going to be able to get a 1. The question is, who gets the minus? Now, I want my answer to be negative 1. So if I put negative 3 plus 4, well, 4 take away 3 is positive 1. So that's not going to work. Because my answer is negative, I need the bigger number to be negative and the smaller number to be positive. So negative 4 plus 3. So the negative has to go with the 4 and the positive has to go with the 3. So when the signs are different, you don't have to decide what the signs are because they're just plus and minus. But you then just have to pass the hurdle of which number belongs to which sign. Now, of course, you multiply out an exam, and so you'll immediately know if you're right or wrong, and if you're wrong, you just go and fix it. Okay, let's soldier on. Last one with a constant of 12. So I would check for a highest common factor. Once I've noticed that there's no highest common factor, and this is a trinomial, it comes from a binomial times a binomial. Next step is I look for what's obvious, and what's obvious is your initial term, which is x squared, so it's x times x. Next step, we ignore the middle term, and we look at my 12. What are my factors of 12? So what are my options? Well, we're getting a bit tired of 12 now. So it's 12 times 1, 6 times 2, 3 times 4. Next step is I look at my signs from the constant term, not the middle term. Remember that the middle term always gets considered last. I need my signs to multiply together to give me negative 12, which means I need different signs. So one of these is going to be a plus and one's going to be a minus. Now it doesn't matter which order you put your brackets in, so I could have swapped those signs around. And so my last step is now which set of factors will add together to give me my middle term. So which set of factors, don't forget the middle term comes from adding, will add or subtract to get, and my middle term is plus 1x. Okay, now we've already discussed the fact that I think 3 and 4 is the only way to get 1. Okay, the question now is you want positive 1x in the middle and not negative 1x. So now the 4 has to get positive and the 3 the negative because 4 take away 3 will give me positive 1. So now I know that that's plus 4 and minus 3. Now I knew not to check 6 and 2 because 6 and 2 can only somehow subtract to give, it to give me 4 and 12 and 1 can subtract to give me 11. So I knew that those weren't an option. Okay, so the A to E was just to show you all the different varieties of you know it's 12 at the end but which set of factors make the middle term work. Right, let's try some more. Ah, first of all, highest common factor. So there isn't one, so it's a binomial times a binomial because this is a trinomial. So that's my first step. My second step is what is obvious. And the only term that's obvious is x squared. So it's x times x. My third step is to look at my factors of 2. And this is wonderful because factors of 2, there's only one option. It's 1 times 2. So I could actually go immediately fill that in. Remember, it doesn't matter which bracket you put the 1 and put the 2 in. There's only one option, though. It's 1 and 2. 
My fourth step is my sines. I need them to multiply together to give me positive 2, so I need the same signs. They either need to be a plus times a plus or a minus times a minus. Now I can tell which option by looking at the middle term because when you add the like terms, you need to add to get positive 3x in the middle. So I know that they both have to be plus signs. Now that means I didn't even have to do step 5 because there is only one set of options. Now what I would do instead of doing step 5 is I'd multiply it and check do you get 3x in the middle. Now let's check. My middle term would be 1x plus 2x which would be 3x. So I know I'm right. Okay, moving on. We're going to start hopefully speeding up a little bit. First step I would look for is a highest common factor which I don't see. This is a trinomial. Granted it's with a squared and not x squared. That's not a problem. So my second step is to say how do you get a squared? It will be a times a. My third step is what are my options for 9? Sorry, that's the wrong color. What are my options for 9? So options for 9 would be 9 times 1 or 3 times 3. Now I would actually write that on the side of my page. My fourth step are my signs. Now my signs have to multiply together to give me a positive. So they must be the same sign. They must either be plus plus or minus minus. Now I can tell which ones by looking at the middle term is a negative. So my two like terms have to add together to give me a negative which means they both have to be negative. So it's minus and minus. Now last step is which set of factors will get me my middle term. So which set will add together to give me minus 10a. Now the minus I've taken care of, I'm worried about the 10. Now there's no way the 3 and 3 are ever going to give me 10 when I'm adding them. So I immediately think it's not that, it's 9 and 1. And it doesn't matter where I put the 9 and where I put the 1 because the signs are identical. Again I'd multiply it and check. Right, on to h. Highest common factor, check. Uh, first step, this is definitely a trinomial. So it's a binomial times a binomial. Second step, how do I get a squared? Must be a times a. Third step, what are my options for 10? Well, 10 have two options. It's 10 and 1 and 5 and 2. Now, even if I just glance over to the middle term, I'm kind of like, hang on, the middle term is 7. So I can pretty much tell immediately which option I'm going to pick. Step number 4 is the signs. So I'm going to look at the positive 10, and so my signs have to be the same signs. So they either have to both be plus, or they both be minus. But my middle term will confirm for me that they both have to be positive, because my like terms have to add together to give me a positive answer. So they're both plus, and I've already kind of predicted that I think that how do I add together to give me 7 is, I'm pretty sure it has to be 5 and 2. And because the signs are the same, it doesn't matter where I put the 5 and where I put the 2. So you'll notice how much quicker this gets, and it only gets better and better once you've practiced a lot. So don't forget to scribble down your answers, I mean your, your notes on the side, and you can always put options on the side for your factors in a test or exam. Also don't forget to multiply out. You always know if you're right or wrong, and then you can go and fix it. Right, let's look at a couple of last ones. I would check for a highest common factor, which there isn't. So this is a trinomial, it's three terms and it fits the pattern. So it comes from a binomial times a binomial. My second step is how could you possibly have gotten y? So notice this is now y and not a or x, so it's y times y, which is y squared. My third step, oh, what are my options to get 10? Well, we've already discussed this. It's 10 and 1 and 5 and 2. Now if I glance to the middle term, the middle term is 3. So I can start getting some ideas as to which one of those is going to be right. My fourth term is my signs. My signs have to be different because I'm multiplying together, together to give me a negative. So one's a plus, doesn't matter which order, and one's a minus. And my last step is which set of factors will add together to give me the middle term. So which set of factors will add to minus 3y? Now the minus I'm not too worried about, but how do I get 3? 
Well, it's definitely not 10 and 1. So I'm pretty sure it's 5 and 2. Now the question is, who gets the negative? Well, you want the answer to be negative 3. So it must be minus 5 plus 2. Only because the bigger number would have to be negative if the answer is still going to be negative. If you swap those round by mistake, the moment you multiply out, you figure out you made a mistake and then you just swap the numbers. Right, on to the next one. x squared minus 5x plus 6. Highest common factor checked. This is a binomial times a binomial to form a trinomial. The second step is obviously how did I get x? I must have got it from x times x. Third step, let me get a bit of color. Uh, what are my factors of 6? My factors of 6 are 6 and 1. And my factors of 6 could be 3 and 2. Now if I just glance to the middle, I'm like, oh, 5. Oh, but if I look at my options, 6 and 1 could get me 5. And 3 and 2 can get me 5. So this is going to be quite interesting. Now I must say, we love this whole x squared and the 5 and the 6 because both options look like they can work. So the most important thing in this question is our signs. If I notice, my signs have to multiply together to give me a positive. So they must be the same signs, so it's either plus plus or minus minus. Which one will depend on the middle term? The middle term is negative, so I know they're both negative, so it's minus minus. So now I've got to think really carefully about which option will add together to give me minus 5x. Now notice they both ha we've decided they both have to be negative. So if they're both negative, which ones will give me minus 5? Now simply because these signs are the same, 6 and 1 if they have the same sign will always get you to 7. It'll either be positive 7 or it'll be negative 7. So simply because the signs have to be the same, this is not an option. Minus 6 minus 1 would give me minus 7. So in actual fact it has to be minus 3 take away 2 will give me 5. So initially it looked like both of these could do the job but the signs always dictate which option it has to be. So if you look at K this is almost exactly the same question except the middle sign is different. So if I scroll up if you, oh sorry the, the, the 6 is different. So if I have a look this is again first step this is a trinomial so it's a binomial times a binomial. Second step is that where did the x squared come from? It must have come from x multiplied by x. Third step, we've already discussed the factors of 6 in the previous question. It's 6 and 1 or 3 and 2. Now again, both of those look like they can give you 5 which is the middle term. So this is all going to hinge around the signs. Now this is where question k d differs from j. This is negative 6. So I know my signs have to be different. So they're not the same in this question. One's a plus and one's a minus. So now, if my signs are different, how can I add to get minus 5x in the middle? So if they're different signs, if 3 and 2 are different, so if we had positive 3 take away 2, we would get 1. If we had negative 3 plus 2, we'd get negative 1. So the moment the signs are different, this option can get me positive 1x or negative 1x simply because the signs are different. So this isn't going to work even though it worked in the previous question. And that's because the signs. The signs make everything either work or not work. So can 6 and 1 work? Well if I had positive 6 take away 1, I'd get positive 5 which is not what I want. So if I don't do that, if I have negative 6 plus 1, that'll give me to negative 5. So it must be negative 6 plus 1. So again, we love these x squared minus 5x with a 6 because both options can look like they work, except the signs mean that only one of the options work. Now, that's quite a lot of factorizing. I've tried to write down the steps every time because it's definitely something that you kind of have to talk yourself through the five steps. Don't forget that if you ever get lost, kind of make a decision, put the stuff in, multiply out on the side of your page and check. If you can see you've made a mistake, then you can go and fix where your mistake was. 
So what, this is quite a long video, it's, you know, 40 minutes. So this is definitely going to take you almost an hour. You're going to have to hit pause quite a lot, write down a lot of notes. And so this will be one lesson. So in tomorrow's lesson, the entire lesson is going to be spent on practicing. Don't forget that you can go back to this video. You can go back to your steps. You can re-watch. Trinomials is something that it's really, really good to struggle, figure things out, think about it, and don't forget to message if you're ever stuck. Trinomials are probably the most important factorizing. So if anything is confusing you, just get in touch. I'm happy to chat to you so we can make sure the trinomials are, are easy for you. Right, well done.